Mahatma Gandhi, advocate of peace, religious freedom, and nuclear holocaust. At least according to Sid Meier's Civilization, a 4X strategy game renowned for its depth and detail spanning across centuries of simulated gameplay. The series prides itself on its various win conditions, strategies, and historical accuracy. Well, to a degree. So if the Civilization franchise is so intent on doing its best to convey various historical possibilities through its gameplay, why is it that the AI of the historical figure who most people would consider to be the apotheosis of peace and love decides to go on a hell-bent nuke spree when the game progresses far enough? Sid Meier's Civilization saw release in late 1991 for MS-DOS and later received revisions on PlayStation, Super Nintendo, Atari ST, and several other platforms. Many touted it as the pioneer in turn-based strategy, receiving numerous awards and accolades for its unique gameplay. Although there were a few points of criticism, such as Spearman units occasionally defeating modern-day tank units, critics were generally blown away by the amount of depth that the game had for its time. There were a total of 15 civilizations to choose from or play against, including Egyptians, Americans, Germans, Greeks, and of course Indians. To better represent each of these civilizations' historical traits accurately and correctly, the game assigned several values to each nation that determined their ideal win condition, growth rates, aggression levels, and overall threat to the player. Gandhi was programmed with an aggression level of a 1 out of a possible 10 which made him generally try to be peaceful towards every other nation and win through scientific victory. Only when he was provoked enough, or in some cases denied the sharing of technology or tribute, would he declare war on others. So how is it that Gandhi becomes a nuke-bearing warmonger by late game? The answer is simple, democracy. At about the mid to late game point, every nation gets to choose their form of government. One of these choices happens to be democracy, which also happens to decrease a civilization's aggression level by two. Gandhi always takes this form of government because of this reason. Theoretically, that should make Gandhi even less of a threat than he already was, at a negative 1 out of a possible 10 aggression. But in a world of programmed integers, negative 1 doesn't exist. And this caused his aggression level to underflow from 1 backwards to 255, out of a possible 10. This newfound aggression couldn't be founded at a worse time for players who had left Gandhi to his own devices the whole game as this was right about the time that nukes came into play. Thus, Nuclear Gandhi was born, terrorizing players for the slightest transgression that he deemed unfit. Or so the legend goes. While this does seem like every game of Civilization was set up just for the player to get into a non-stop nuke fest with Gandhi in the late game, this actually wasn't the case. This bug, while hilarious and infamous in its own right, only occurred under a specific set of conditions. Firstly, India was only available as an opponent when the player chooses to play against six other civilizations. Secondly, because of early game Gandhi's pacifism and peace-loving ways, India was usually dismantled by stronger and more aggressive civilizations that inhabited the world around it. Even when India was left to its own devices for the whole game, Gandhi only becomes a nuclear threat if he's already at war with the player when democracy is chosen, because you cannot declare war as a democracy unless you have been attacked first. Even so, the legend was born, and players continued to exchange excited stories and disbelief about the once peaceful Indian leader who went mad and bombarded the world with nuclear fallout. Word eventually found its way back to the developers, who found the mistake funny. They decided to leave the bug in, and continue sprinkling in allusions to it throughout the series. Tales of Gandhi being a bloodthirsty warmonger, and generally a dick to others, continued to crop up through the releases of Civilizations 2, 3, and 4. He's a one-man wrecking crew. Eventually, Civilization V came out, and with it came the specific values that dictated each nation's tendencies throughout the game. These values were placed on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest. Upon the start of a new game of Civ V, the values were randomized just a little bit anywhere from plus 2 to minus 2 of the original starting value. When players looked through the traits for each leader, it was soon discovered that Gandhi had mostly normal values. His likeliness to go to war and general competitiveness started at a 2 out of 10. His friendliness and loyalty values started at a 7. And his build nuke and use nuke values were set to 12 out of 10. 
This meant that even if the game started with a negative two modifier to Gandhi's willingness to build and use nukes, he would still be at the maximum possible value in these categories. It was a funny homage to the bug that occasionally plagued the original game and created a fictitious footnote to a historical legend. Funnily enough, these values suited the flavor of the original bug extremely well, as Gandhi was still generally peaceful towards the player, barring a few random exceptions, and only a real threat if the player decided to go on a warmongering rampage in the late game. And this time, he's mad. Gandhi 2. The bug may have originated in the first game, but it was the developers at Firaxis Games who popularized it the most with the inclusion of these values onto Gandhi's otherwise peaceful demeanor. So, how does everyone's favorite nuke-laden leader live up to the long-lasting legacy of launching lethal missiles in the latest iteration of Civilization? Depending on who you ask, things are worse than ever. Or the same as they've always been. In Civilization VI, Gandhi's back and fiending for some big ballistic conflict. In this latest installment of the franchise, all leaders are given two agendas that define the way they go about the game. Every leader gets a primary historical agenda which they always follow, and a secondary hidden agenda which is randomized. For example, Montezuma's historical agenda is that he likes civilizations that have the same luxurious resources which he has. But his hidden agenda could be a range of things, from trying to build up industry as rapidly as possible, making his citizens happy, or having a large standing army. Looking over Gandhi's historical agenda in Civilization VI tells us that he hates warmongering and that he will never declare war on anyone except for those who he deems to be a warmonger. Pretty standard stuff so far, but what about Gandhi's hidden agenda? Well, this is where his thirsting for radioactive relations stem from in the latest game. In Civilization VI, some nations have certain hidden agendas that are always affixed to their respective leader. In Gandhi's case, his hidden agenda is... nuke happy. I'd give you three guesses on what that means, but we all know that everyone's favorite big Indian boy won't hesitate to create Fallout 5 if given the opportunity. In fact, he reveres nukes in this game praising the player for building an arsenal and displaying its power. And that's the story of the nuclear Gandhi bug. What started as a bug and evolved into an easter egg quickly went down in history as one of the most infamous examples of underflow occurring in an old game and manifesting in a ridiculous way. Love it or hate it, Mahatma Gandhi's radioactive rampage has persisted across many iterations of everyone's favorite 4X strategy franchise, and it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. My attempts to avoid violence have failed. An eye for an eye only makes the world blind. Thanks for watching. As with nearly every other video on this channel, I haven't really done anything like this before, so it means a lot. I'd love to cover more bugs from different games in the future, so I'm sure this will become a recurring series. The content on this channel comes out when I have the inspiration, and varies greatly, but if you'd like to see me stream, I do so semi-regularly on Twitch. Just don't expect as much... eloquence. Thanks again.